In this video, we are going to find out which soup is tastier and creamier, pumpkin or butternut squash. We will also test whether coconut milk or heavy cream adds that perfect creamy touch, and which spices elevate these soups to the next level. And besides our main stars, pumpkin and butternut squash, here is what we've got lined up. For our soup base, chicken broth. I mean, yeah, water does the job, but chicken broth? Game changer. It just give that deeper, richer flavor. On to aromatics. We've got our trusty onions and garlic. They are like the dynamic duo in the kitchen, a backbone of many dishes. And to jazz things up a bit, I selected a trio of herbs. Fragrant sage, dainty thyme and bold rosemary. They're gonna give our soup those cozy autumn vibes. Now, the creaminess showdown. Coconut milk versus heavy cream. While both promise to add a rich and creamy texture, they have distinct flavors. I'm super curious to see which one complements our soups better. And of course spices, we are tasting smoked paprika, nutmeg, ginger, cinnamon and curry. And I can't wait to see which ones make our soups pop. Time to fire up that oven and get roasting. Preheat your oven to 180-190C. First off, peeling our main stars, the pumpkin and butternut squash. These guys have a pretty hard exterior, so if you are using a peeler, make sure it is a sturdy one. A flimsy peeler might not cut it, literally. But hey, if you don't have a peeler, no worries, just slice them up and trim off the skin with a knife. You might have a bit more waste, but it is no big deal. Yeah, and of course, scoop out the seeds. Don't stress about cutting them into tiny pieces. Pumpkins and squashes roast beautifully even when sliced into large chunks. In fact, larger slices can be juicier since there is less surface area for the moisture to escape. Butternut squash is much easier to peel and slice. It is also notably softer and juicier, by the way. Moving on to our garlic. We are going for roasted gold here. Slice the head of the garlic in half. Give it a sprinkle of olive oil and wrap it snugly in foil. We will pop it into the oven like that. Towards the end of roasting, you can open up the foil a bit to let the garlic caramelize even further. Speaking of caramelization, let's talk about onions. Roughly chopped onions have a way of turning beautifully golden and sweet in the oven, so no need for a nice dice here. And to make our experiment more reliable, I want to make sure that we use same quantity of veggies and aromatics. So I'm going to use kitchen scales. Now, with our ingredients ready to rack, coat them with some olive oil, ensuring they are well covered. Like I always say, if you can caramelize it, do it. It takes the flavor to another level. Spread everything evenly on your baking tray and let the oven work its magic. And since I have two pumpkins, I am using a separate tray for each. It is definitely not a good idea to overload the tray. It is better to lay everything out in a single layer so it roasts and caramelizes evenly. For our herbs, I am a bit particular about the texture. I prefer my soup smooth without bits of herbs floating around. So rather than roasting them with wedges and blending together, I will tie them into a bouquet and let them simmer in the chicken broth. 10-15 minutes should do the trick to infuse all those aromatic flavors into our base. Given that pumpkin and butternut squash have distinct texture and juiciness, I periodically check their readiness. It is evident that the butternut squash cooks faster. It is already soft. I remove it from the oven, set it aside and allow it to cool. The pumpkin, on the other hand, needs about 10 more minutes in the oven. And the first thing I notice, it is not as juicy. I'm not sure if it is just the particular variety, but it is very dry. Once our wedges have cooled down a bit, it's blending time. I thought I could manage with an immersion blender, but I quickly regretted that decision. It was a hassle, splashing everywhere, and I even had to resort to using a food processor. So if you have a good blender, I strongly recommend using it. Into a bowl I added roasted caramelized pumpkin, onions, garlic, salt and herb infused broth. And for pumpkin version, it was unreal to blend with immersion blender as it was super dry. In total, I added about 6 times more broth than for butternut squash and even some water to achieve the desired consistency. It was still on the thicker side, but a pumpkin soup should generally have that kind of texture. Plus, we are going to add coconut milk and heavy cream. In the end, I had two distinct soups, both boasting that silky smooth texture we all crave. Perfect. Now it's time to determine the best combination. Which pumpkin soup will taste better, with heavy cream or with coconut milk? Let's divide our two soup bases into separate portions for the creaminess challenge. For one batch of each soup, we will be introducing the tropical flair of coconut milk. For the other, we will be adding the classic touch of heavy cream. Let's find out which ingredient elevates the soup to that perfect silky smooth texture. Ensure you blend well, making sure the chosen creamy addition melts flawlessly with the soup base. 
First off, every one of the four variations was delectable. The coconut milk imparted a tropical, subtly sweet nuance to the soup. In contrast, the heavy cream delivered a familiar rich and cozy undertone. Naturally, the colors of the soups differ as well. The pumpkin soup boasts a more vibrant hue, which makes sense giving the paler bag-like color of the butternut squash. Interestingly enough, the pumpkin soup paired better with the heavy cream, whereas the butternut squash seemed to marry well with the coconut milk. For me, pumpkin soup with heavy cream is the winner, a harmoniously tangy sweet dish. Meanwhile, the butternut squash soup had a sweeter profile, almost dessert-like. But hey, that's just my palate's perspective, I'm curious about your thoughts. If you have sampled both or have a preference, do share your insights in the comments below. Having crowd, our creamy champion, it's now time to find out which spice truly complements our soup. Let's equally divide our soup into 5 containers. Each container will be introduced to one distinct spice. Lively ginger, the aromatic nutmeg, deep smoked paprika, subtle cinnamon and rich curry. After adding each spice, I will ensure a thorough stir, allowing the flavors to integrate and settle within the soup. Now, on to tasting. All 5 options have their unique tone. Each of the 5 versions presents a distinct flavor profile. However, the ginger on its own felt somewhat lacking. The nutmeg alone also fell short of expectations. Smoked paprika, on the other hand, was sheer bliss. Cinnamon didn't hit the mark for me, but I suspect it would be a great match for the butternut squash version with coconut milk. As for the curry, it was undoubtedly the star of the show. After sampling all of them, the curry-infused soup truly shone the brightest. It is depth likely stems from curry being a blend of spices, while the others are standalone seasonings. Mixing them might also give similar result. And now, when we have our absolute winner, let's jazz it up. One of my favorite toppings is roasted pumpkin seeds. Not only do they add a delightful crunch, but they also carry a nutty flavor that complements our soup. Toast them up in the oven or on a dry skillet until they pop and became golden. They will bring that much needed texture contrast. Add a light drizzle of heavy cream or coconut milk. To add color and freshness, add a touch of fresh parsley or cilantro. And who can resist the charm of crispy croutons in a creamy soup? Cube up some day-old bread, drizzle it with olive oil, maybe some garlic powder, and toast them until they are golden. It adds both a crunchy element and a rustic touch. Add some quality olive oil and a dash of freshly ground black pepper. Alright folks, one last taste to seal the deal. A blend of pumpkin, onion, roasted garlic, herb-infused chicken broth, heavy cream and curry. All these combined have given us the ultimate creamy pumpkin soup formula. And please, don't forget to check out my next video. Every click and every watch means the world to me. And it is the best way you can show your support. Peace.